The first step that I want us to all go through is just to open up the notebook vqe underscore demo dot ipython notebook. And just to show you, that looks like. This one. And if anyone has had trouble getting their notebooks up, just raise your hand if you're joining us new and we'll have help sent your way. So the first step is just everyone, please run the first cell and you should see API token setup success. So raise your hand if you see success. Great. Does anyone not see success? And if so, we'll come around and help you out. Okay, cool. This is just reading from the configuration file we set up the API token earlier, which is why it's working again. All right, back to the more interesting stuff. So uh, Ken walked us through the background already. I'm just going to rehash it in terms of how to convert it into code. So again, with VQE, the general setting is that we have some matrix H and we want to find the lowest eigenvalue or eigenvector of this matrix. So our approach has two parts. The first part is the quantum part. And in the quantum part, am I talking too loud? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The first part is to prepare the ansatz, which is the trial wave function or just the guess. And it's parameterized by n angles. And then the step two, is to measure the Hamiltonian or the, ha the matrix H term by term. Then there's a classical feedback part where we have our measurement of H, the expected value of H, and we just do this loop of figuring out what did our quantum part tell us last time, and then pick a new set of the N angles in the quantum part step one, and then loop over and over. So for the very specific setting, of, uh, yeah, we repeat. For the very specific setting we have today, we're gonna explore the uh, molecule that is a helium atom bonded to a hydrogen atom, uh, hydrogen ion, so two electrons total, hydrohelium. And uh, the matrix that we're interested in finding the lowest eigenvalue of is the Hamiltonian. So the Hamiltonian is this matrix that captures the energy of the molecule of interest. And when we find its lowest eigenvalue, what we're finding is the ground state energy, which has a lot of applications in chemistry and physics. So what you're going to be doing in this demo is the quantum part. You're going to have an iteration. And then for the classical part, you are going to be the classical part. So what's going to happen is you're going to run an iteration. You're going to get the output of the expected, expected value of the Hamiltonian. And then you're going to try new angles and keep doing it over and over to try to minimize and find the lowest eigenvalue, which is the ground state energy. So let's break this down into the two parts. The first part of the quantum part is preparing the ansatz. So as Ken mentioned, there's two types of ansatz that we can prepare. The first is where you take a look at the problem and you find some sort of wave function that is characteristic of that type of problem. Is there a question? Oh, okay. Um, so for example, in quantum chemistry, the gold standard might be something called UCC, unitary coupled cluster. Another choice of ansatz is where the machine ansatz or the hardware ansatz, where we look at what is our quantum device actually good at performing and make that our ansatz. And that's the choice that we're gonna take today. So this is our circuit for the ansatz. And let's break it down into three parts. The first part does initial rotations. Each qubit gets an X rotation by an angle alpha zero on top, alpha one on bottom. Then there's a Z rotation of beta zero on top, beta one on bottom. Step two is the entangler. The entangler is most notable for having these C naught gates, which cause entanglement between the top qubit and the bottom qubit. If you don't have any entangling gates, then you really just have two qubits that are completely unrelated to each other. So that's why you need these two qubit gates in the middle, or anywhere for that matter, you just need them. And then step three is final rotations, and it's very similar to step one. You just have Z rotations, X rotations, Z rotations. So for this particular ansatz, we have 10 angles 
alpha zero, alpha one through epsilon zero, epsilon one. And what you have in your notebooks is on the next cell is scaffold code, which again, like in Ollie's demonstration, is just a Python string that'll get compiled through our interface to OpenCASM. And for the purpose of modularity and also making the uh, code show up better on the screen, we've divided the code into segments. So the main function, first we have a declaration of a qubit with two, uh, two qubits in reg and two classical bits in result to measure the qubits. And we've broken up the code into step one, preparing the onsats, and step two, measuring the onsats. So digging into step one, preparing onsats. Preparing onsats has these three steps, initial rotations, entangler, final rotations. We have provided you with the code for initial rotations to give you an idea of the syntax. And all it's doing is Rx and then Rz. Each gate takes in two arguments. The first argument is the qubit that's specified. The second argument is the angle. So for this, we just have Rx on the first qubit, reg zero, by an angle of alpha zero, and similar for the next three gates. The next part is one that you're actually going to implement, which is the entangler. So for the entangler, go ahead and fill in the code. And what you want is a Hadamard on the first qubit, followed by a C naught. The C naught takes two angles, uh, sorry, two arguments, the control qubit and the target qubit. So for the first C naught, you're going to have control on as qubit zero and target as qubit one. And this is the solution, but you can feel free to type it in yourself. And if you get stuck or if you forget the syntax, just scroll to the bottom of the notebook and there are solutions available. So I'll pause for a minute or two, or 30 seconds more, um, for everyone to type that out. And I'll try another one of my quantum jokes. <laughs> what did the Hadamard gate say to the pronunciation? Laurel. <laughs> Who heard Laurel on that? Did everyone hear any? Yeah. Maybe it was the audio. So that Hadamard gate did not work, but there's errors. The joke there was that it's supposed to put it in a superposition, and I think of Yanny and Laurel as being an equal superposition, although I only hear the Yanny. Uh, it's. Oh yeah, the question is what order are the control and target bits? And it's control comma target. Which means that this is actually flipped. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> it actually won't really impact the algorithm. Yeah. Yeah, the solution that you have is zero one. Okay, it's only on my slide. Yeah, the slide is a little, sorry about that. Uh, so you want C not reg zero, then reg one, and then the second one should be one comma zero. Thanks for pointing that out. So everyone has the entangler ready? Cool, and if you don't, just scroll to the bottom and you can find it by entering the cell. So final rotations is also ready for you. Uh, nothing too complicated here, it's just x rotations, z, z rotations, x rotations, x rotations. Z rotations, z, x, z. And then that's it, that's our preparation of the onsets. The next step is to actually measure the Hamiltonian. So this is where I first tell you what the Hamiltonian is. It's that, but that has nine terms. And remember that we can only measure one term at a time. Each of these terms corresponds to the sigma, the poly matrices that were introduced earlier. But we're only gonna focus on measuring one of these nine terms for today. The one that we're going to focus on is sigma zi, which has the coefficient of negative 1.0467. Negative, the point being that in order to minimize that term, we want to maximize when we measure sigma zi. So what does it mean to measure sigma zi? 
So sigma zi is a matrix that looks like that. And measuring a uh, observable like this really means projecting the quantum state to one of the eigenstates of this observable. So the eigenstates of sigma zi are actually very simple, which is why I picked it. It's just 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, which means that to measure it, you don't actually need to do anything special. You just measure it. And the eigenvalues are plus 1 and minus 1, plus 1 corresponding to 0, 0, and 0, 1, minus 1 corresponding to 1, 0, and 1, 1. So this means that we have a very simple prescription for measuring sigma zi. All it is is simply measure the qubits. If we found that it was 0, 0, or 0, 1, we consider our outcome to be plus 1. If we found 1, 0, or 1, 1, then we consider our outcome to be minus 1. So for our measurement then, and again, because we want to minimize a negative term, we want to maximize our measurement of sigma zi. So the more times we get plus 1, the better. So here's the code for the measurement. And this is what you'll go ahead and write as well. It's very simple. All you do is put into result 0, measure z. Uh, you can basically forget about the z there. But it's just there's a measure x and a measure z. Measure z just means measure in the computational basis, which is that 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 basis. So everyone go ahead and type this in onto measure. And again, if you can't see this code up here because it's too small, just scroll to the bottom of the notebook and you'll see it's available as a solution. Any questions? If you don't ask questions, you get jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Was that supposed to be a joke? <laughs> Bad one, yeah. All right. A large number claims it is too big to be factored. The quantum computer scientist responds, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why is quantum LeBron James unstoppable? With all the, that momentum, he's all over the court. Position, momentum, uncertainty. All right, so it sounds like you all have measure ready which means that you have the scaffold code. The last piece that you need is just to actually define these angles, alpha 0, eps, uh, alpha 1, through epsilon 0, epsilon 1. So I have here, I've just defined them all as 0. But this is where you guys can go ahead and pick your own angles. In practice, the first one is actually just a guess. So go ahead and write at the top, const double alpha 0, beta 0, et cetera, through, eps, through epsilon 0. And again, if you don't want to go through the tedium of typing that, just go to the very the second to last cell, and you can see that code and just copy and paste it. Uh, just at the top above initial rotations. Yeah. The question is, where should the code be? It's already there. It's already there. Okay, great. So just change the values to be um, a guess. Yeah. Uh, they're angles and radians, so you can put any double. Yeah. But in theory, you want it to be between 2 pi and yeah, 0 and 2 pi. The question was, what is the range of the angles? And they're in radians. So everyone has some guess in. The next step is below. It should say executing the code. And you can go ahead and just run that cell. Again, all that does is compile your code down to OpenChasm. And you should see your quantum assembly for that code. So for myself, because I just picked zero angles, I just have zero rotations for the zero rotations all through. Uh, some issues with the simulator. I'll come up. Maybe you missed the right time for the speed and the other things. Can you have four hours? Does it have to be measured? 
So does you're trying to we'll see it in the next step actually. So everyone has their open chasm ready. Now the next step is to actually simulate it on the classical simulator. So if you run the next cell, it'll perform the measurement on 1,000 shots. And again, because this is a sigma z i measurement, we assign a value of plus one to the zero, zero, and zero, one measurements, which is why we have counts zero, zero, and zero, one as having a plus one coefficient and minus one for one, zero, and one, one. And the expected value will just be a average over those values. So when I ran it, I got 0 0.024. And this is where the uh, part, the competition part kind of starts. So this is the value that we want to maximize. Maximizing this value corresponds to minimizing the negative 1.0 sigma z i term, which in turn corresponds to minimizing the energy for this molecule. So this is where it kind of turns over to you. Go ahead and pick your own angles and uh, continue to iterate. You are the classical part of this VQE simulation. All you have to do is run it, see how you did, If and there's different strategies I can suggest here. One would be to do sort of like a gradient descent where you uh, try it multiple times, see if you're improving. If you're improving, go further in that direction. If your uh, expected value is becoming smaller, then try reversing the direction of your deltas and your angles. So does that, is that clear to anyone? Any questions about that? Okay. So the prize for the highest measured expected value for the simulator is IBM credits for the quantum experience. And I think we have, was it 150 or? Oh wow, 250 credits, which will basically make you the lord of IBM quantum experience, because that's a lot of credits. <laughs> uh, so if anyone beats 0 0.8, just call that out, and that won't necessarily win, but I just want to get a sense of how people are doing. And if you need help, you can just raise your hand and we'll come around. And the last thing is, below that cell, you can also run it on the IBM quantum experience. So that'll be the same as usual. You just switch to the notebook and, or I'll switch to the notebook, and run the execute, execute on a quantum computer. And you'll see that there will be more error on the actual quantum computer, but the general pattern will be the same. When I ran it, this, these were my results for uh, having zero set to all my angles. And that's that. And by the way, the other way you could approach this problem of actually finding the minimum is to do it more analytically. And that would be to go through this circuit and try to figure out which, uh, what would you set these angles to in order to get the end state to be either one zero or one one, which correspond to the eigenstates of the observable that are plus one in terms of eigenvalue. Is this making sense in terms of what you're all iterating on? By the way, um, I just want to mention that the IBM credit, I guess, I think it's a little bit of a misnomer. It's not, it doesn't really get used up. Like it, it replenishes after you try to run some stuff. So it's like a huge, uh, like you're a power user forever, right? Uh, from 15 to 250 is yeah, like so ridiculous. Like you, you can <laughs> run, that's it. So when you sign up as a regular user, you get 15 credits. And, and that just means that every time you execute, put, put something on the queue, it eats at your credit a little bit. Once the execution finishes, it, it brings it back so that it just to manage the number of jobs that flood the queue. Um, that just, more credits just means you could put more jobs on the queue, do more experiments. So it's for like VQE type of things, there are many circuits that you potentially run. So you could probably do this type of thing with more credits. Uh, one more thing, if anyone is leaving early, just feel free to take a t-shirt. There's a quiz kit t-shirt as well in the back before you leave. Also, if you have one of our flash drives or the USB adapter, if you could just return that to the front before you leave, that would be great.
Yeah. So the question is why we're maximizing. Uh, yeah. And the reason is that we're trying to, our overall objective is to minimize the energy um, and minimizing the ground state energy. We're only looking at one of the nine terms, so we're not actually minimizing the energy, but we're at least minimizing this one term. Minimizing the negative corresponds to maximizing without the coefficient. Do you have any problems with this Yeah. Has anyone gotten past 0 0.4? Yeah, okay. So we've got a race going on. Okay, we've got 0.84 winning. I heard a zero, uh -huh. 0.82, okay. Someone had a 0.84, right? Okay. So you're still winning, but you've got competition, 0.82. And we'll say that this ends in four minutes at 521. Why is classical LeBron James better than quantum LeBron James? Classical LeBron James is unfazed. Quantum bits have phase. Yeah. I'll just mention one more thing. There's a bonus optional cell at the very end where you can visualize your circuit similar to an Ali's presentation. But if you want to see, verify that your circuit looks like the uh, onsatz that we were intending to make, you can check that at the very bottom.
Oh, yeah. And this just in, the runner-up will get 100 credits on IBM's API, too. <laughs> so if you're not getting 0.84, don't worry. There's still a world out there, quantum simulations. Not simulations, actually. actually. All right, I'm going to set a timer for 90 seconds. If you're stuck on bad numbers, just try guessing and checking. You never know. Sixty seconds left. Forty five seconds left. Point nine oh six. Fifteen seconds left. <laughs> Point nine one two. Okay. Three seconds. Two. One. It's the very quiet timer. All right. So uh, let's do like a cumulative distribution function. Everyone, raise your hand who participated. And if your best score was less than uh, 0.15, put your hand down. Okay. If your best score was less than 0.3, put your hand down. If your best score is less than 0.5, put your hand down. If your best expected value is less than 0.6, put your hand down. So you all have ones better than 0.6. That's awesome. 0.7. Ooh, okay. 0.75. Ooh, 0 0.8, 0.85. Okay, could you stand, the remaining remainder stand up, just so we know who's in contention? <laughs> All right, 0.89. Oh, good job, good job. Okay, uh, 0 0.90. You're all, okay. 0 0.905. Good job. Okay, uh, why don't you guys go ahead and announce your scores? Nine zero zero. Nine zero eight. Nine zero two. Okay. Nine one six. Nine one two. All right, there we have it. <laughs> Mister Point Nine One Six gets two hundred fifty IBM Quantum Experience API credits. Yep, and then Mr. Point nine one was it two? Very close call, but you still get a lot of credit. So, yeah. um, that's it for me. Does Fred have closing remarks? Um, yeah. So, right. The other step that's available is actually running this on the quantum computer. So, hopefully, everyone had a chance to do this too. The queue won't be too backlogged, but. Go ahead and try out your best, and we'll also consider maybe if you did well on the actual IBM machine with errors, maybe there will be other consolation prizes, t-shirts, yeah. <laughs>